So you want the million dollar trading plan for next week, but we're here to look at what trades we did last week. And let's go over the markets together, guys, like we always do every week. I normally put this video out for you on the Saturday, but I do take the levels from the Friday because this is a pre-recorded video but we're gonna go to the charts we're gonna have a look at how the US 500 fared last week and is gonna fare next week how the FTSE how the DAX is doing and what's happening with gold gold's a big one a lot of people are trading gold at the moment and gold is going nuts so let's go and have a look at gold as well and while we're at it we'll take a look at the euro US dollar great British pound US dollar are they going the same way or are they going against each other interesting point that don't you think and this week we took a trade on the South African Rand we actually took a trade on the South African Rand but after we've been to the charts what we're gonna do we're just gonna talk a little bit about the psychology of trading and how does the psychology of trading actually affect your trades on a day-to-day -day business how can you actually become a profitable trader in the market and how can you actually become even a break-even trader at that and what strategy should you be using we're going to go over that strategy again because it's important to understand the strategy at the end of the day because that's how you're going to become a profitable trader in the market guys we don't hold trades over the weekend as far as we can help it you especially with all the things going on around the world and things can change very quickly over the weekend. So the, how, we, how we go about that, what do we do on a Friday afternoon so that we're not sitting in trades over the weekend? And what do we do on Monday morning when we come back to our trades and our trading platforms empty? <laughs> We're not exactly day traders. We are kind of swing traders, position traders, because we trade on the four hour charts. Been doing this a long time, guys. 30 years is a really long time to be doing this. But I put these videos out there so that you guys can understand that you can't make a million dollars in a day. It takes a long time to learn how to trade. Trading is something that you have to work at and get good at. Trading is risky, and if you don't like risk and you don't like losing money, you probably shouldn't be trading. And that's the basis of it all. Trading is a 50-50 game. I always say it. 50% of the time when you take a trade, you could win. And 50% of the time when you take a trade, you could lose. And that's as simple as it gets, guys. It doesn't get simpler than that or more complicated, whatever the case. So, by the way... Go down to the description, get your free Forex book. It's there for you, totally free. It's a PDF. Download it and enjoy it. Have a bit of fun. And also, I put a trade of the day out every single day for you guys. It's just an idea. It's not trading advice. It's just what I'm trading. You guys can follow it if you want to, or you can see if you're doing the same as me, or if you're doing something completely different. Also, for the members who join uh, the membership on YouTube, I actually put a video out for the guys every single day going over the market in the morning and i also give them a list of where i think trades are going to go for the day like i said trading's a 50 50 game doesn't mean we're going to get it right every time it just means that's what i think the markets are going to do but let's stop rambling on and let's go and have a look at the charts and let's see what the trades did last week and what we think the trades are going to do next week hey guys let's have a look for the trades for the week and see what's been happening now keep in mind that i'm looking at this on the friday i'm not looking at this on the saturday and i'm just going over the trades that we've been over for the week and where it stands at the moment now these prices might close completely different to where we stand at the moment but it just gives us an idea of what's been happening this week and what might go on next week now the dax is still in profit it's still on its up run and as you know i look at this over a bigger picture i'm looking at the picture here of it staying in this range at the moment so as long as it stays above this trend support we're looking good and uh, if it can stay above this trend support and go all the way up here that'll be great but even if it just toddles along up here eventually even if when it comes back through the trend support will still be in profit so that one is looking okay as far as the indexes go the us 500 is still looking bullish even though it's a little bit short there today no big deal you know it's above the main support and it still looks like it could go to the upside the FTSE is trading in a range you can see that there's the top there's the bottom no big deal there the nikkei yesterday it came all the way down and now it's gone all the way back up again it seems to be bouncing in and out of this area there seems to be a lot of money in this gap here so so yeah, 
it it's like it's liking this range but for a flag it's a very wide flag so i wouldn't really call it a flag i'd say it's gone into a kind of a range gone up and sitting in this range in this gap there is money in this gap but there is a, a lot of resistance at the top here so the risk to reward isn't that great on a long so what i would wait for here is for it to either get all the way down to this main support and bounce up off of there and, and giving us giving us a little bit more of a long trade up or wait for it to get all the way to the resistance and give us a short trade trade down um i don't think i'm going to trade it off this gap anymore gold is 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 now turning bullish again uh even though we've got this nasty red candle here today it had, did turn bullish nicely it's gone back into this range so it's just it's made the range a little bit wider so it looks like it wants to go to the top again so we'll wait and see and we'll see how that goes so gold is is looking sort of bullish again nothing great nothing to write home about but it's there guys i gotta say if the geopolitics calms down brent still looks short you know it 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 kind of broke through a level here. If I look at it, there, there is a demand of money here. Um, phew, will it work out or not? Difficult to say, but the, there is a demand of money here. So just let's see. It might come back into that and go up, or it could go all the way back into this resistance and then pop down. But I don't see it breaking through this resistance at the moment. It probably will want to come back and pick up this money, which is lying down here. So on Brent, perhaps a long trade from 76.40 back up or perhaps a short trade from 80 bucks down that's about where i see brent at the moment euro us dollar certainly short it'll probably come back test this again and go short again at the moment it's short it's not breaking through here let's see what happens it did break through to the downside so this has now become resistance rather than support but the great british pound is sitting above this support hmm that's interesting if it's sitting above this this support here it's uh if this one's going long then why would this one one be going short so what might happen here is this might go long back up into the what's now resistance and the great british pound might go up to a level where it hits a kind of trend resistance and then pop back down again so that's probably what the scenario is with the great british pound again the us dollar then you've got the US dollar, Japanese yen, still long. It's still going in the long direction. I don't see it changing anytime soon. The US dollar ZAR, we took a long trade on it this morning and it turned against us. Don't know why, but it did. But uh, it's all to do with the US dollar at the end of the day and its strength and, 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 and all the rest of it. So it's, it's really pulling the markets around at the moment. It's pulling gold around. It's pulling all these other currencies around as well. But uh, if, if we get a bit of a recovery in, in the US dollar strength, then this ZAR will go all the way up to this profit level at around 1780. So I'm looking at US dollar gaining its strength back, nailing the ZAR down to its 18 level as it was. So the US dollar weakening, don't think it's going to just keep on doing that. There's there's a lot of reasons for it to get its strength back as well. Euro Great British Pound still short, looking a bit short here. So we'll just stay short on that for now. The US dollar CAD had one incredible run and it's broken through the resistance, which is a sign uh, that it will that it will continue on up with. So if it comes back and tests this now, what is now support, it'll probably continue on up to the 138 levels. So this is quite a strong, strong trade. The other thing is it is a flat uh, lamp hole formation. It might fall over and it might fall hard. So watch out for that as well. Australian dollar, US dollar, we are still long because we're looking at this overall trend again. We're in the trend. It's at the bottom of the trend and I'm expecting that it'll continue on inside that trend. So that's why I'm remaining long on that particular trade the bitcoin for those of you that are in bitcoin and trade crypto be very wary of this pattern this pattern looks ominous to me i see so many head and shoulders in here it's like i'm seeing ghosts and monsters guys just watch out for this pattern this pattern is generally a very bearish pattern look i'm seeing head and shoulders here i'm seeing head and shoulders in there i'm seeing one developing here and i'm just seeing this general fall over it fell out of its uh, uh, railways it fell out of its trend it broke its structure and the structure is turning to the downside what i see bitcoin doing is going down to the 52 50 000 level somewhere down there so that's my opinion just my idea just my opinion if you guys decide what you want um never been a big fan of bitcoin in the first place i will trade 
trade it if there's something to trade. But if I look at this, this just looks very bearish to me. It does not look positive in the least. If I look at this chart pattern on anything, um, I'm going to run in the other direction. I don't like this chart pattern at all. It looks bearish to me. So if you want to take a short on it, that might be a better option. Okay, so the DAX is uh, playing me up today, messing me around. But gold is coming back. Uh, maybe it will come back all the way. Maybe it won't. I don't know. The, the South African Rand decided to give me a bit of a kick. I don't know why, but it did. It was looking good this morning. And now it ain't looking so good no more. But we'll see. We'll see how she goes. And the Australian dollar, US dollar, also doesn't seem to want to go in the direction we want it to right now. Brent crude oil, like I said, we were calling it short. But now it does appear to be looking like it wants to take the long side of the trade. No worries. We'll see what happens. We'll see how it goes. So guys, till next week, well, let's see how the trades go. We'll see how we open on Monday and then we'll take it from there. But at least we got, well, oh, the DAX is still in profit at least, but a few moments ago, it was a lot more in profit than it is now. But I see it staying in this range. And uh, if you're calm about it and you trade on the four hours, everything's fine. The big issue we've got here is it's Friday and uh, I don't like staying in trades over weekends. It's going to be a big gamble to stay in the trades over the weekend. I'd rather trade out of them and trade back in on Monday, but we'll see what happens. We'll see how I feel and what I'm doing this afternoon. So there we go, guys. That's the charts. So that was the charts, guys. That's what the charts are looking like at the moment, and that's where we're going. Now we know what we are planning for next week. How do we approach those trades? How do we approach those trades so that we've kind of got a profitable mentality so that we can look forward to actually making a profit in the markets. And it's and it's pretty simple and straightforward, guys. It's not rocket science and it's not difficult. The first thing that you have to understand is, like I said previously, is that trading is a 50-50 game. 50% 50 of the time when you take a trade, you could win. 50% of the time when you take a trade, you could lose. Now, why do I say that? I say that because the market is made up of buyers and the market is made up of sellers and everybody wants to win would you believe that do you know any traders that actually get into trading because they want to lose now every single one of those traders believes that they've got a mega strategy a strategy that's actually going to win in the markets they're going to win at forex they're going to win at commodities they're going to win at indexes they're going to take you on and they're going to have a 70 80 percent win rate and for those of you that know me will know that i'm not interested in your win rate i don't care what win rate you've got because for me a win rate is meaningless a win rate can be achieved by making 10 bucks on every win trade and winning but if you lose one and you lose a thousand that's gonna be ridiculously worthless so a win rate is worthless to me what i want to know is are you profitable do you make a profit at the end of the day now how can you make a profit in a market that's 50 50 in a market where you've got a 50% chance of winning because you're going to say to me, but Rob, with a market like that with no edge really, well, you have got an edge, but let's say you've got a 50% chance of winning. How are you going to be profitable? It's really straightforward, guys. You lose less on your losses and you make more on your wins. In other words, when you take a trade, and this is the business plan, keep it in your head. You don't have to write it down. The business plan is simple. When you understand that the market is a 50-50 game, when you finally get it through, then you agree and you think, oh, you know what? Rob's actually actually right. The market is a 50-50 game. Goodness me. Then you put this business plan in place. And that is simple. Let's say you've got a $100,000 account. You want to risk 1% on each trade. Maybe you want to risk 2%, but let's say 1%. 1% is good. It's a good risk. Now, every single trade you take, you risk $1,000. Now, don't change that. Don't tomorrow go, okay, now we're going to make it $2,000 on that trade and $1,000 on that trade and $4,000. No, $1,000 for every every single trade you take. In this light, just keep in mind, you take 10 trades, you've risked 10% of the account. But the likelihood of you losing all 10 trades, unless you've chosen similar products, you shouldn't lose all 10 trades. It, it's just improbable. On all probability, you'll win five and lose five. That's the probability at the end of the day. But what you're looking for is you've paid $1,000 for each trade that you've taken, and you want to try and make $2,000 on each trade that you've taken. Now, that's not necessarily going to happen. You're not necessarily going to make the $2,000 on every single trade that you've taken, but that's what you're aiming for. And if you get close to that, you should be in profit. And the same goes for your losses. If it's heading for your $1,000 stop loss and you just feel the trade's invalid and you don't feel like trading it anymore, you can get 
get out of the $200 loss, you can get out of the $400 loss, but just take smaller losses and make bigger wins. You're going to have a whole mishmash of wins and losses along the way because you'll be moving your stop loss up, which is part two of the business plan, right? And that's what's going to give you your win rate. You're going to have this mega win rate and you're going to think I've got such a big edge in the market. My system's so great because I just keep on winning, but you're winning small amounts and that is a problem. There's only going to be a few trades that are going to be gargantuanly great that are going to take you to your main target and make you that double money that you want. Not every trade is going to do that and it's going to be really frustrating and difficult to be patient to make those trades. And this is the difficulty. It's the psychology behind it that makes it so difficult. You know, the funny thing is, guys, is what people will do is they will use their fear to get out of trades that are actually profitable. So in other words, your trade goes into a profit. You're, you're targeting $2,000. You're $300 in and you're like, oh, there's a profit there. Let me take that and get out. And you don't need to do that. You don't need to let that fear overtake you. What you can do is you can just move your stop loss closer. So if you're feeling at three, $400 that you just don't want to take this $1,000 loss and you don't want to lose that $400, don't even move it to cost. Move your stop loss up to $600 loss or $500 loss because you have $400 in profit. So now you're still $1,000 away, but at least if you lose, you only lose the $500. Or when it gets $1,000 in profit, you move the stop loss up to cost. Then you're losing nothing. The trade is free. Then it goes into profit above that. Then you move the stop loss into profit. And when it gets to your target, you move the stop loss right up behind your target and you let it go through your target with the hopes that it keeps on going. If it goes through your target, you move your stop loss up to where your original target was. Wow, if it comes back and takes out your target, you've made such a big win, not a loss at all. There's two parts to your business plan and that's it. It's as simple as that. The squiggly lines are meaningless, guys. The squiggly lines are there to let you psychologically think that you've got some kind of an edge in the market, that you've got some kind of an edge over everybody else. All trades that you take in the market are probability trades. Your probability is based simply on what happened previously. That's why we have trend support and resistance trends. We trade in trend, we trade overbought, oversold, we trade in a range. Why do we do that? Because we're basing our trade on the probability that it'll do what it did last time, that it'll do what it did the last few times. That's the probability. That's how our brains think. But squiggly lines aren't always going to do that because behind the squiggly lines are human beings and human beings all want to make the same profit. They all want to be profitable. So what will happen is behind the squiggly lines, there'll be traders putting orders in. And that's what you're searching out. You're searching for those little orders and you're searching for that to go in your favor. And that's why sometimes when you take a trade, it just goes against you immediately. And you think, wow, the market's got it in for me. Someone's watching me trading. Do you ever felt like someone's watching you trading? You ever felt like they're watching you so closely that they're taking your stop losses out and things like that? Are you one of those guys that believes the market's searching out your stop losses? <laughs> no, you're just putting your stop loss right where all the other stop losses are, right where all the other orders are. So when the price comes in there, it takes those orders and it goes. It's just looking for those orders. If you're clever enough, you take your stop loss and you put it a little bit away from all those orders and then maybe you'll have a good trade. There was one guy who used to turn around and say, when you're thinking of taking a trade, don't take the trade. Take the trade when it reaches your stop loss area where it would have been, then take your trade. And you'd be surprised how many times that actually does work. <laughs> but guys, I hope you have a good trading week next week. I hope that it works out well for you. Don't forget to come back and watch the live shows with me next week. Also come back on Monday where I put the video out, which is going to talk about how you should retire early and what retirement's all about for you. Guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to watch the previous videos. Till next time. Cheers. Thanks. And bye.